Hello, Hamburg friends. Uh, my name is Mats Olsson. I'm from Sweden, uh, working for the Norwegian Handball Federation and the Swedish Handball Federation as a goalkeeper coach. So I will try today to speak a little bit more about goalkeeping and uh, the importance about the goalkeeper in the handball game because we all know if we don't have a good goalkeeper and uh, then we don't have the right level and it will be very complicated to win some tournaments and win even the games. So uh, that's why we have to talk a little bit extra about the goalkeepers and uh, how we can develop them for the future. Let's see. When we talk about goalkeepers, it's not easy to be a goalkeeper today. The handball game has developed a lot. Uh, the players are more quicker, they are faster, they are shooting harder. Everything is going so fast today. So when we're looking at the particular place as a goalkeeper, a lot of times we have to think about that the goalkeeper need help. And the best way for a goalkeeper to, have, to get help is from a goalkeeper coach. Sometimes we can talk about the goalkeeper trainer, sometimes we can talk about the goalkeeper coach. But I, I can see it's a big difference between a goalkeeper trainer and goalkeeper coach. A trainer can help the goalkeeper with exercises to develop and to be physical fit and so on. But the goalkeeper coach, it's making the next step. He's helping the goalkeeper with the thinking of how to act as a goalkeeper, the strategies, the tactics as a goalkeeper. It's not only to be there to try to stop the ball. You have also to, to be there thinking before the shooting like the players are playing with the game. So it's uh, very important if you want to have the good goalkeepers to develop that you can help them with goalkeeper trainers and especially with goalkeeper coaches. Okay, uh, when we talk about the goalkeepers and uh, the stages of development, I can put it into three different stages. Uh, we have the, the first stage, like we can see, the acquisition phase. This is the stage where we are starting up with the goalkeeping. We will talk a little bit more about techniques. Then we have the next stage, is the refinement stage. And this, the, this part of the, where we go from not only technique training, we also go in a little bit more in the tactical training. And then we have the last part, is like we call the stabilization phase. It's when the, the goalkeeper is getting a little bit more experienced, uh, get a bit more power in his movements and in his thinking, uh, using a little bit more about the strategies in the play, you know. So, but let's stop there and we go a little bit further in, in each part of them, now on. Uh, yes, we have been talking a little bit about the, uh, the development of the goalkeeper trainer and the goalkeepers and the different stages. We should also talk a little bit about the methodology of the goalkeeper training. And then we will later on try to put them together. And let's see if we can find out exactly what I'm meaning about goalkeeper training and goalkeeper coaching. But in, the, in this part of the, of, the, of the goalkeeper training, when we're talking about the different kind of methodologies, we can start with the easiest one. As we can see, I call it the simple technique training. It's where we're starting with the beginners. Yes, we were talking about the simple technique training. The next step in this methodology uh, phase that I'm talking about is the complex technique training. It's different from the, the simple technique training because the simple technique training, as we showed, was the player was shooting where the goalkeeper know where the ball is coming. That you should train a simple technique. But in the complex technique training, it's when the goalkeeper don't know exactly where the ball is coming or has to make a pre-movement before the shooting is coming. And that's the difference between the simple and the complex technique training. The next step in the methodology of the goalkeeper training is to, for, to help the goalkeeper to read the shot. It's not so simple that it can also be just training physical training, making physical preparation, train the technique. The most complicated is uh, uh, finally for the goalkeepers is to understand where the ball is coming in, in, the, in, the ball, uh, in the goal to make the save. You need a good efficient technique but if you don't know to read where the ball is coming then you are out as a goalkeeper. So this next step in the methodology is to help the goalkeeper how to read the shooter where he's thinking to shoot or where she is thinking to make a feint or try to put the ball in the goal. It's not too simple just to look at the ball. So the next step in this methodology is to help the people, goalkeeper to read the shooter body language or 
try to find out where the ball is coming. Um, the last way when we are training with the goalkeepers in the methodology is reading the game. Uh, maybe this is the, one of the most difficult parts and where you can really see the excellent goalkeeper distinguished from the good goalkeepers. To read the game is to be uh, in the right position, in the right time, because if I can really read the game like, in, like a good playmaker, when you're playing outside the court and you are still a goalkeeper, but if you can read the game and you can be thinking what's going to happen and you can be in the right position, in the right moment, a little bit earlier, earlier or find the right position in the goal, then you have won a lot of things and you need less technique and you're closer to, uh, to, to the ball. So that part, the last part of this uh, uh, methodology is to help the goalkeeper, to coach him how to read the game. And that's a lot of time for the coaches as a goalkeeper coach. The most interesting part to help the goalkeeper to develop. When we mix this together, the development stages and the methodology of the goalkeeper training, we can go into and see what we really in action are thinking about. For example, in the acquisition phase, and we use the simple technique training. This is the most simple way how to train the goalkeepers. It's like, if we look at it here, we are playing, we are shooting. The goalkeeper has one shooter, one ball, one place in the goal. The goalkeeper knows what will happen. He knows who's going to shoot. He knows when he's going to shoot. He knows where the ball is coming in the goal. So it's very easy training. You can make it more complicated for the goalkeeper to put it in the wrong position in the goal. So he has to make more movements. But this is training that we should use a lot in the youngsters and sometimes also when we are getting older and we are more experienced, we need this kind of training sometimes to train our technique. But a lot of times in the training, we are using too much of this kind of training up in the older ages and the good goalkeepers have to train other things that we should be talking about now further on. We have been talking about the simple technique training. The next step in the methodology it's the, uh, what we call the complex technique training. The complex technique training, it's uh, separated from the simple because for the goalkeeper, in the simple we said, you know where the ball is coming and you have one place in the goal and you should be more thinking about how to stop the ball. Now in the complex, you don't know exactly where the ball is coming as a goalkeeper. You should be prepared for maybe two positions in the goal the ball is coming. Or we can also make it that you have to make a quick movement before so you're not ready exactly uh, like you would be in the simple technique training for the shot when it's coming. Or we can also put the position that you have hidden shots like in the real game, when the ball is not clear lit for the ball goalkeeper to see it. You can have it put something material between the, the, the shooter and the goal. So it looks like defenders that are there, so, but they will not stop the ball, but they, they will try to disturb the goalkeeper from the, the full concentration of the shooting. We go further on and now we can talk about uh, the next step in this methodology is the reading the shot. This situation is uh, when we are a lot of time we are using in the training. Uh, it's just small games, two against two, three against two, uh, two against one, two, uh, three against three. These kind of games where we need a goalkeeper coach. A lot of time the coaches, the head coaches, are very preoccupied with the players on the court, but the goalkeeper coach in this moment has to help the goalkeeper how to read the shooter and try to help him from uh, read the body language. Not only where it, how he's uh, moving the, uh, the body, but also a little bit helping where is the defender helping you. Now we have living defenders also inside the court. Not only shooters like before, when we're talking about technique training or complex technique training, then we are the shooters is the most important. Now we have integrated this training together with the goalkeepers and the defenders. Maybe the defenders are not defending at 100%, but there will be situation that is more similar to the game. So if we look at these situations here, we can see it really nice 
how the goalkeeper is working together, try to find out of the shooter where the ball is coming, what the body language, where the, goal, where the body or the, the shooter is looking and try to find out the situation and uh, with the help of the, the defenders also. So now we are getting closer to the game. The last part of the methodology is reading the game. How can the goalkeeper uh, be helped in this situation uh, to read the game? Because a lot of times when the goalkeeper are in the training and the, 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 the team is making tactical training, maybe the goalkeeper is not so concentrating on really what is happening. Handball, uh, it's a sport where we can see the more, more or less similar movements. So if we as a goalkeeper can learn the movements of the play and le learn to read the game, if this situation will happen in a game, I have more facilities, more possibilities to make a save. Because I can win time or plays. If you're a good goalkeeper, there are two ways that you can take an advantage through the, against the player, the shooter. One of them is winning time and the other one is winning plays. So if you can help the goalkeeper in reading the game in these situations, this is the training where you're playing six against six or six against five or situations from the game. But this is the team where, the, where we really need a goalkeeper coach to help and ask, put in the right questions to the, to the, um, to the goalkeeper. What did he see? Why did he take this solution? Why didn't he go in another way when he had the possibility to see, to read the game, what really was going to happen? Okay, let's have a look at this when I'm talking about reading the game. Here we have a good example from one game where we can see that the goalkeeper is making winning time and play the space against the shooter because he was making a good understanding and reading of the game. Have a look at this one. So, when we're talking about the goalkeepers and uh, uh, to save the ball, it's a lot of work behind this. We have, uh, we have not been talking a lot, uh, much about the physical preparation. We have been talking more about the technical, we have been talking about the reading the game, reading the shooter. But for a goalkeeper to, to save the ball, when he really is in the goal in the game, to work with it to save the ball, we have uh, a timeline to say it in a way. Where we can talk, we start before the game. All the goalkeepers in the high level and also in the lower level try to get some information before the game about the, the opponent. No, uh, you can. You, a lot of time we use videos. We use uh, information, talking with people. Where is the favorite place to shoot and so on? All that we have to put in before we start the game. Then the next phase is like we'd said before that the goalkeeper, the better goalkeeper. The better understanding of the game, the possibility to read the game, the better possibility that you have to be a good goalkeeper. The next phase will be, like I said before also, that reading the shooter. Now, how to uh, this, uh, read where the shooter is thinking to shoot the ball. Because the ball is coming so quick a lot of times, with some, well, over 100 kilometers in the top players in the world. So you don't have time to react on the ball. You have to react on other situations, on other impulses, no? And that's why we have so important to read the shooter, what he's thinking to do or what she is thinking to do. And the last thing, what we never can forget, is that we have to focus also on the ball. 
on the ball and the hand of the, where the ball is. Because a lot of times we have to have an open mindset. But when we come to the closest to the moment where the shooter is shooting, we need to be very focused on the ball and see where the ball is coming because there is the next step where we have to make, really do the action to stop the ball. No? And there is the next part also. We can also say a lot of times the goalkeeper, uh, maybe they are not the best when they are the physical best moments in their life. Most of the good goalkeepers is getting up a little bit older because they have experience. And this part of reading the game, reading the shooter, they're putting into the experience. And that's why it's so important that we, as a goalkeeper coaches, can help the, the goalkeepers when they're still young and very strong and fit uh, physically to be even better goalkeepers being, uh, by reading the game, by helping them to coach them. To be a good goalkeeper is not only, like we said before, uh, physical preparation, technical preparation, tactical preparation, read the game, but it's a big part is the mental part. The mental part is one of the key points to be a good goalkeeper or top-level goalkeeper. Uh, and that's a lot of things that are coming in there. Because the really, if you want to develop and uh, be one of the top stars in the handball of, of a goalkeeper, you need to be confident. You have to be, need charisma and try to impone on the opponent that they're feeling a little bit worried when they're going to shoot against you. So it's important that this kind of development of the goalkeepers is not only the physical and technical and tactical part, it's also a big part of the mental uh, behavior of the goalkeeper to help the goalkeeper to feel safe about himself, to uh, self-confidence, because of that can giving a big opportunity against the shooters when they are going to shoot and they are feeling that the goalkeeper is even better and even bigger than he is really is or she is really is. Uh, so in the mental part of the go game here, when a goalkeeper is a little bit too low in, in, the, in the concentration or he is not getting into the, to the mood, then it, the, the muscles and the, the, the flow in the movements is not good enough. But the problem is also when it's getting too hot, when the goalkeeper is too hot and too much tension, Maybe sometimes that the goalkeeper is just too hard in the muscles and is not able to concentrate and think about what we were talking about reading the game and reading the shooter because it's too much thinking going on in the brain. So it's very important for the goalkeeper when we're playing in the mental game to find this point when it's not too low or not too high. It should be in the perfect that you're feeling self-confidence, you can feel that the body are with you but not overreact. So when we go into the, into the brain to the goalkeepers, uh, in the brain of the goalkeepers, it's a lot of things that we have to think about before the games, analysis and everything. But also it's very important that the, the goalkeepers has the knowledge about the impact you can have as a goalkeeper on the game and also on your own team, on the, on the opposite also, the opposite team. Because mm, a good goalkeeper should be like an actor. You must be a little bit acting without going too far away, losing your brain, thinking too much about acting. But you should know that you are on the court and everybody is looking at you. Uh, and that's a, it's a privilege, no? That's why we want to be a goalkeepers. So you need charisma. If you are a charismatic person, it's more easy to be impacting on the game put the impact on your own team, that they can feel comfortable, that you are playing there, they can look behind you and then see that you are there. And it's impact also on the, uh, on the opposite uh, the shooters, no? It's big difference if they can see a goalkeeper that is really in the position and it's like to be there and uh, looking at the audience. And rather, in, to be a shy, small goalkeeper, maybe it's not the best option Maybe it's better to be a little bit more charismatic. Let's see, for example, here. Here we have some charismatic goalkeeper. Without overreacting, they should, you should notice the presence of these goalkeepers on the court. 
but you should not you notice them that they are like clowns. There is too much. Lite så. Livelli, bra spelat. Ja, oh, det fick han till det. Panika. Efter första matchen i VM kom Yves in 10 minuter, men man väntar hela tiden på att komma in i turneringen. Och det var ett skönt sätt att komma in på den då. På vilket sätt kom du in i det här och vad, vad gillar du för spelet och hur är samspelet och hur mycket är din förtjänst i det här? Försök att vara lite ärlig nu. Ja, nej, men, vi fick igång med det här stressande försvaret som vi varit så bra på att vi ger skjuttarna lite tid. Och sen måste man säga att Argentina är i vanliga fall ett lag som passar med väldigt bra. Då. Med lite snabba halvdistansskyttar och mycket kantlägen och sånt. Det tycker jag om. Och... Ja, så efter 10-15 minuter kom jag in i matchen och sen höll det egentligen resten. Nästan under en kvart i den andra halvleken så var det inte någon som lyckades passera dig. Hur är den där psykologin? Är det något som händer i skallen att det känns som att nej, nu är det ingen som tar mig, nu är det ingen som passerar mig? Är det, det, handlar, något, ja, det handlar om att hitta in i matchen och sen hitta sitt inre lugn. Det har man ju lärt sig kanske äldre dagar att hitta lite snabbare även om man får en dålig start. Så när man hittar det lugnet så, så har man en del kunskap som har tränat upp genom åren, så ja, och jag, idag funkar det. Något ska man ha lärt sig. Ja. Hur är det att spela inför den här kulisten? Du säger att du behåller lugnet, men jag kan tänka mig att man kommer också in i stämningen ganska mycket. Ja, men det är just, alltså, just det vi snackade äpplet igår, liksom, alltså, man är ju överladdad. Alltså, man måste passa om att bli överladdad. Jag var helt matt i benen efter fem minuter, jag inte fått något skott på mig. Det är, publiken är helt fantastisk. Jag har aldrig upplevt något liknande. Alltså, stolt att vara svett. Talking about the mental game, uh, one of the other things that is important for the goalkeepers to help them is to what we call in the sports world, find the flow. Uh, find the flow. You know, the problem is that you never know where you're going in and when you're going out. But if you're talking about the find the flow, to be in that state when you're feeling one with the body and everything, it's a lot about the focus. And that you are really focused without, like we said before, not going over, uh, not being uh, on too much on fire or not too low. But find this flow that you feel, especially with self-confidence. If you, if you can feel that you are physically good prepared and you're physically or the mentally prepared before the games and you can just go in and play the game, be in the place in this moment, not thinking about the consequences. The big problem when you go out of the, of the flow moment is when you are thinking about the consequences. So a good goalkeeper could be playing in the moment, being here and now in this moment. That is a big thing for us goalkeepers if we could find that possibility. We've been talking before about reading the game. But reading the game is not only reading the game in this moment what is happening, but you also as a goalkeeper need to have strategies. If you have strategies when you're reading the game, how should I act when this and this, this situation will happen? If it is a cross with a pass or if the, the pivot uh, pass to the pivot, um, that's, that's one of the, the things that the good goalkeepers is very uh, able to do. You have also, all the goalkeepers, we will have good and bad moments. Nobody is playing perfect every game all the time. But if you have strategies as a goalkeeper, and when you're reading the game, you have more possibility to come back to find yourself quicker during the game or to the next game or during the tournament you're playing. Because it's uh, without strategies, if you don't think how I want to act as a goalkeeper, if I don't know exactly my strategies, how I want to work in some situations of the game when I'm reading the game, then I, when I'm doing a bad game and I'm talking with my goalkeeper coach, I don't know what we are really going to work with. So it's important that we, I as a goalkeeper, know how I want to play and how my strategies should be. Zacharyson, good save by Appelgren, his first of the game as we enter the line. Zacharyson, good set. I inne då spelar försvar. Han brukar åka ut när han är inne. Ja. Här räddar han på benet. Rent friläge ja. ifrån den här biffiga Jabala. Väldigt bra att han, han har läst det här. Han går bara på armen och hela kroppen. When we're talking about uh, this, about the goalkeeping and the, the, the mental part, uh, another small part we have to be thinking about is when the situation is coming to the, to the shooter to, to finally shoot against you as a goalkeeper. 
Then you have the situation one against one. It's like a, a fight. This small tenth of a second or half second when you in your brain can see who is going to shoot against you as a goalkeeper. And you have this small psychological fight between you and me. Because the shooter a lot of times knows that I've been looking at the videos and we, uh, we, which one will going to win this fight about knowledge. I know that you know, but you know also that I know that you know. All this psychological, uh, what you call psychological war between the shooter and the, the, the goalkeeper. No, it's very interesting this part because uh, you can always, as a goalkeeper, you are the last one. You make the last movement uh, because the ball has to left uh, go from the hand of the of the shooter. So you can always take the the situation into your uh, advantage. Not a disadvantage. It's always advantage to be the goalkeeper in this psychological war between the shooter and the goalkeeper. A typical situation in this uh, small, call it war, between the, the shooter and the goalkeeper is from the wing position. As we can see here in an example, when the wing player is going to shoot, the, the goalkeeper is waiting and try to find out and win this psychological war to see where the ball is coming. Bota, ja, så var det. Ja, förblåser han inte domaren. Tycker synd om Argentina. Och så vill han att Panica skulle göra en cirkus cirkusräddning till. Ja, han gör den där grejen när man backar in något när de försöker hoppa över den. Det är enda chansen faktiskt i det här läget att man går lite snett in och bakåt. Och det är en klassiskt fin rädd. The wing, bit of an angle there, good save, Solberg. Ninth save of the game. It was a decent angle as well. It was a clever play by Heindal. The line. And this mental part, it's also uh, the, the body and the mental should be in one for the goalkeeper. And uh, try one of the big problems for a goalkeeper is to to know what's going to happen and. Uh, not show the opponent that I know it. What we were talking before about the psychological war between the, the player, the shooter and the goalkeeper. In this moment, uh, when I know what's going to happen as a goalkeeper, to continue to stay cool and not show you as a shooter what's going to happen. I should be concentrated, I should be very finding the right timing because if I go too early, I show you what I'm thinking to do. And if I go too late, the ball is passing me, no? So, and then we can also think in this moment, uh, a lot of times the goalkeeper, like we said, we have the information from before the game with the analysis. And when you go to the key points, the key moments of the game, a lot of times you have to go back into your mind and find these analyses. For example, seven meter shooters in the end of the game, it's very important if you should win or lose. Then you can a lot of times think, okay, I know this shooter. She or he will shoot where she is feel, feeling safe to score. So if I can find that moment in my memory, I have in my brain to put it upwards, then I have a bigger possibility to save the ball. But stay cool and concentrated in this moment. The ball like now some have found it. spel. Men det är ju stängt där. Ja, det är oerhört, oerhört kul att han kommer in i matchen igen här nu. We've been talking about the concentration. We are talking about the mental game and all that. And all this is about focus. A lot of coaches and a lot of people in the, in the, the sports world are talking about focus. And for us, the goalkeepers, to be focused, it's important. But it's impossible. No human being is able to be focused 60 minutes in 100%. That's impossible. Uh, to be focused is one thing we can talk about it. But the most important thing for a goalkeeper is to refocus because we know it will be goals maybe it should be two three four in a row 
and then you start to think a lot. So the thing for a goalkeeper to be at the top level is to be able to refocus, to forget what happened or just think a little bit about what happened and don't be losing the concentration, thinking in, in things that you can't be able to change. So one of the biggest things in the mental game for the goalkeeper is to, uh, to be able to refocus. Go from the moment when you're losing a little bit of attention and go back and be focused once again. Because like I said, it's impossible to be in that mood, to be in a concentrating during 60 minutes in a, in a high intensity game like we are playing in Hamburg. So what we've been talking about now has been the mental game, no? Uh, it's a lot of things where we, uh, when we put into the goalkeeper um, work. As the goalkeeper, who had to work with all these different things, the physical preparation, the tactical preparation. But finally, I think that the most important part of the goalkeepers is about the brain. It's a lot about the brain. The goalkeeper should be able to read, to understand, to be focused, to refocus, to play this psychological game against the, the opponent. Uh, so it's a lot about the brain. Yeah, this has been the, the first uh, contact when we were talking about the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper training. Uh, as I said in the beginning, it's very important that we can help the goalkeepers uh, with goalkeeper trainers and especially if we have experienced goalkeeper trainers that can be working as goalkeeper coaches, have the, the language with the goalkeeper. It's very important to change these opinions and uh, it's a very complex world this with the goalkeeping. It's not so easy that many people think that it's just to go into the two by three meters to stand there and the ball will hit you. It's not, we have some goalkeepers that is trying to play the way that the ball is hitting me, but because of the ball is coming to you to hit you, you have to do something. And a lot of times what we say, we have a physical preparation, we have not been talking about that this, but that's a topic we will be take, talking about later on. We have other topics, but technical, tactical things that we will go deeper in further on also. And we've been talking a little bit about the mental game, but as you can see, this is a very complex world, even if it's one position of the, of the game, but it's the most important position of the handball game is the goalkeeper. So this complex world, I made a small introduction to you that you can see a lot of things that we need to work on with in the future. Thank you very much for this time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these moments that you have been uh, looking at these uh, videos and this introduction to the goalkeeper. And uh, I hope to see you soon again here on the video or maybe live in some part of the world. Thank you very much.